All right, so this video is a long time coming. Um, Legends, okay, this isn't like a rant video. It's more so just a discussion video and, and also something to clear up some misconceptions, I think, in terms of the summons in this game, right? I want to talk about the, the different rates that are applied, the way the game has handled different summon variations and banners, because we've seen so many different things. We've probably seen more than like seven or eight different types of, of step-up models. We've seen pity systems introduced into the game as well. We've seen uh, 999Z power drops. We've seen higher than that. Uh, we've seen three times rates. We have seen higher than 999, right? Yeah, well, there's, there's like 2,000 on, on the ultra, so whatever. Um, nonetheless, so we've seen 30Z power drops. We've seen 20% rates, which then becomes pretty much the norm. We've seen all types of different stuff. So I really want to break this down. I'm not going to go down a full trip down memory lane, but I'm going to talk about some of the more pressing and relevant things recently in the community, like some of that stuff. And one thing that, like I said, I, there are some stuff that people kind of mention, like, oh, this banner sucks, or these types of banners suck, which may not be exactly the case. I mean, not really speaking for this example, but just the style of banners. Also, these banners suck. Again, there is value in every single type of banner for different reasons in this game that I'm going to kind of explain to you if you weren't really understanding this or weren't seeing it this way. And uh, we'll also talk about the consistency or lack thereof of the amount of characters released in this game and the way that the game has really shifted and, and just the style that they're kind of going with in terms of releases. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let's dive in. So here we have Cooler, the most recent banner on the game. Uh, the first thing I'll say is... I do still think people should just be saving for step ups. Now that is a caveat because you'll notice most of the stuff that comes out these days is step ups. When we first started saying, oh, just save for step ups, they were very, very, very premium and very, very, very uncommon. That is no longer the case. I mean, even these rerun banners are step ups and step ups are so really good for the most part. The value in step ups has shifted. Like I said, step ups are just, they've changed so many times. I can't really dive into that in today's video. The video will be too long, but if they're going to be giving out characters like Cooler, you know, who is insane, then yeah, it really doesn't matter. If I'm being honest, it really doesn't matter how powerful the rest of the banner is, what other LFs are on the banner. If you care about summoning the best of the best, you're going to pull on Cooler's banner regardless, okay? they. It doesn't matter if there's three other sparkings on this banner. You're pulling on this banner because Cooler is here and he makes the banner. That's the point, okay? Uh, nothing else really matters. And they understand this as well. That's why, for the record, there's only one EX on the banner, right? There's no, and you'll notice, there's not very many times where there's even two sparkings on the banner anymore at all. You probably have already noticed that, right? So Cooler makes this banner. You you summon on these banners if the character's really good. Well, if you want to have the characters, there's obviously caveats. If you summon for somebody you don't have, etc., blah, 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 go for it, okay? But I'm just making a general point. Now, if you look at the rest of the characters that are actually featured here, this list is actually broken. It's bugged. The website's bugged. Um, but you'll notice very, very quickly that there is a massive pool of sparkings that you most likely don't care about on these banners. So again, that heavily emphasizes my point that Cooler is who you're summoning for. Now, there are characters down here that are featured. All these sparkings and stuff down here, these LFs at the bottom below heroes are what's actually featured so you have these uh, other lfs you may be looking for at a 0.25 rate and you'll have these featured sparkings at a 0.5 rate now one thing you may have noticed is if you don't summon for characters on their initial banner two things happen first and foremost and this was extremely relevant with bardock there is a gap between when they're available again Right. The reason why is obviously to incentivize you to pull for them there and to give the people that do summon then and there a premium value. Like, you know, the character is limited. It's in limited quantity. If they skip the banner for whatever reason, that's why. And then later on, they come back, obviously, and that's just how the game works. So that's the first thing that happens. Secondly, especially if it's not an LF character. The, the thing that happens is it becomes really hard to get these 1% sparkings, uh, even if they are featured, by the way. So right here, these characters have good featured rates, uh, but you'll notice if we take a look at the all-star banner, the, key, the characters that are featured here are at a 0 0.04, not 0 0.4 or 0 0.5 like Tapion, for example. They are a whole other decimal point over. This page is not bugged like the other one, by the way. They're not hiding at the bottom. This is the actual featured list. So th this type of banner, for example, 
really really is hiding those characters so you have to really pick and choose your banner your banners in terms of not just summoning then and there but summoning when you see these characters in the scouter i don't know what the case is on dokkan these days but most of the time if you look at dokkan scouter the characters have an even and good distribution on the rates not a whole other decimal decimal point over they might as well not even be in the scouter because they have the exact same pull rate as the characters that are not featured and that are filler on the banner they have the exact same pull rate they are literally this is actually this is actually if i'm being honest a completely misrepresentation and it shouldn't even be be something they, they should be able to get away with because it is telling you that these characters are featured but the thing is they're not literally this is why they can get away with it they're not telling you featured characters have boosted rates that's something that we know because that's typically how gotcha games work anyway but these characters are featured as, as a means to say, oh, hey, if you want to get Purple Weiss, he's here, but good luck getting him at a 0 0.04 rate, right? So that's kind of what happens there. And that leads me to the point on why these types of banners are also good, because they get the best of both worlds. You know how I talked about the step-up banners having a very wide pool, but the characters that you actually care for, like if you wanted to summon for Tapion on this cooler banner, he's at a 0 0.5 rate. That's manageable. That is manageable. You will get some dupes if you summon deep enough. The 0 0.04 rate, you, you, there's no way to manipulate that. You are not getting those characters with any form of consistency. And that trickles down into stuff that I see all the time when a new Zenkai comes out. Oh, I don't have this character. I've been playing for like three years. I don't have this character. At, I only have met three star. Well, it's like, dude, you didn't summon on the initial banner and you don't summon on banners like this <laughs> and they're never featured really they're hardly ever featured <laughs> then if they are featured you got to make sure it's the ones where they got the actual good rate like this one unlike the all-star banner which to be fair this is almost all-star exclusive and i'm pretty sure the reason why is because there's some some guarantee stuff like the the mission packs which we'll talk about in a second as well but yeah, that's why. That's why. It is what it is. Character inaccessibility is a really big deal, and it's actually more prevalent and common than you think in this game. But the thing is, the caveat to that is, those older characters, in most cases, they may have a Zenkai, they may not. If they do have a Zenkai, the odds are they're not as good as the actual top brass of this game. But that doesn't mean that they're irrelevant to the extent that people don't want to own them, don't want to Zenkai them, what have you. Now, let's finally talk about these rerun style banners. Your Legends Regeneration, your Legends Powerful Opponents, your Legends Saiyans, if you will. So here's Bardock returning for the first time, okay? Uh, he, he they, they really took him away for a long time. He was gone for like eight months. So Bardock was really, really, really long time coming. Actually, it was eight months in like a week because I think he came out on like the 13th of January. He was almost a year off from the day that future Gohan came out. And Gohan came out in January 2021. Anyways. So a couple of things happen here. Like I said, they got the best of both worlds. First and foremost, you'll notice the sparking amount is extremely limited. Two, four, six, eight, ten, thirteen sparkings on this banner. As opposed to a billion. <laughs> and this is just Cooler's banner. This happens on every other banner that's not those Legends rerun type of banners, okay? This is not just a step-up exclusive thing. It happens on every other banner that's new to the game featuring new characters that is uh, that is not a banner like Bardock's or like this Kid Buu one or whatever that's in here, okay? So that's how these banners work. First and foremost, the isolation of pool means you are only getting the characters that are featured. And look at this featured rate. 0 0.85 now the caveat to this is the quality of character and this particular banner is not very high okay i mean i mean there's like maybe <laughs> there's maybe like three good characters on this entire page seriously so this this banner specifically is not the best example but it does serve the purpose of explaining what i wanted to do which was first and foremost the isolation of the pool and then secondly the way that the featured rates are working because you're getting different things on different banners there's no consistency okay um so that is what you have to really focus on what you have to know going forward is that the banners can be misleading to a high extent when it comes to the overall pull rate and uh you need to be aware of that so I want to also talk about character availability in terms of the sheer amount of characters that are even on banners anymore. Um, so I, I, like I said, I kind of mentioned like, be uh, not Beerus, but uh, 
Jiren's banner featuring like him and this isn't it this is a rerun banner but his initial banner with him he had Beerus on it uh, Bardock came out with two EXs and Tor and Fasha and then we really hit an all time low when it came to Trunks last month Trunks released last month as the only new character on his banner. Now, they found this thing, and, and, and this really has been very, very, very relevant in 2022 exclusively, uh, but a lot in 2021 as well. They found this uh, format where they can give us one character or two characters and just make them better, like I was mentioning with Cooler earlier, because that character carries and makes the banner, and we'd be happy with that and call it a day. Now, people aren't really, really happy about it, but I'll tell you, I, I personally am not terribly upset about this type of change, because at least... On a banner like this, if I get a Broly animation, or not a Broly animation, but like a Bardock animation, I know for a fact it's going to be Trunks, you know? <laughs> so I'm not really mad about that. Uh, on the older format, where it would be more and more sparkings, that was something that you couldn't really pinpoint. So I really want to show you what I mean, uh, because, like I said, it hit an all-time low this year. But it was relevant last year, too. Uh, but the anniversary this year was, you know, the first two parts with SS3 Goku and MUI Goku, those really could have just been one banner, if I'm being honest. They could have been one banner. They, they really just could have. The only reason I wouldn't have liked it is because it's two sparking LF Gokus on one banner. But otherwise, the amount of quality, of, the amount of number of characters wasn't that high. Here's an example of a banner. And this is on the higher end of characters just in general. Uh, but this was uh, Legends Festival 20... Legends Festival? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Legends Festival. I think Legends Festival had a part one, part two thing going on this year with Gogeta and Broly and stuff. But anyways, it's in that time period, uh, November 26th. So yeah, we're just two months out from Legends Festival, by the way. Anyways, moving on. Look at this. Five characters on this banner here. Three Sparkings and UI Goku. Okay, so... Like I said, they found a pattern that, that's sustainable for them and allows them to spread out their workload. But I also think a couple of other things that we don't talk about have happened that have, have led to some of the decisions, uh, like the rates change, uh, the, uh, like the amount of characters and like the, the rate changes when it comes to featured stuff here. Because I mentioned it earlier, this is a side point, but it's, it's related. Banners like this or, or like the Zenkai banners are very valuable only because... Um, they have those mission packs, okay? Zenkai's uh, characters unlocks. If you don't have the Z-Power, you can go there and forcefully get the 2,000 and whatever Awakening Z-Power you get. That's very high value because anytime you can guarantee yourself a character in a gacha game, it's valuable. So naturally, by extension, the only value in these banners is the fact that you can pull these characters one time and get them basically to six star by using the extra guaranteed unlocks of Z-Power and call it a day right that's the value of this banner so guaranteeing yourself something is very valuable and important in the gacha game so moving on from that the the other key thing that happened here was the rates so the rates changed guys that is why in large part aside from aside from like i said them them finding a sustainable model the rates change uh for legends festival 2021 at the end of last year, we hit three times rates. Okay, it's going to be right here somewhere. Here it is. We hit three times rates. And after this, ever since this, our overall rate, I believe on every banner, I have to go in and log in and double check to see if any banner still hit 10% anymore. Notice it says triple at 30 because this was something that happened here. Our banners have been at 20%. So even here... The rates were really high, um, and they only had three characters, one of them being an EX. A very, very massive pool of characters as well, and it looks like either this page is bugged or there's no... Yeah, there is some 0.5s at the bottom. Okay, so that's another huge deal that I don't think gets talked about enough is they've done this trade-off where they're giving us more characters overall in terms of rates but not actually, and, and again, the overall cumulative rate, because if you want to still pull those characters, you got a 0.5% for those ones at the bottom out of 30%. So it's a little bit still fluff, if you understand what I'm saying. 0.5. <laughs> Anyways. Um, 
So you just basically get more cracks at the apple, if you will. Uh, so that's another trade-off here is that we got the higher rates, but instead they're putting out more uh, or less characters, and that's the workload. Because even here, uh, it was at 10%, right? And you have to also consider the different ways that these step-ups are handled when it comes to some of these banners. But that's another thing that I think is very, very important to the grand scheme of things for the way the game is handled. But here it is. If I take you back to the beginning of this year, even here you'll see lack of consistency. There's four characters here, two EXs and two Sparkings, right? And let's move on to Bardock's initial banner, like I said, which was the very next LF release. Uh, actually, B Bardock was right before. Here it is, Bardock. That was not Bardock game. I asked for Bardock. There he is. So Bardock is him and the two EXs, like I was saying. We move on from there to the very next LF, which is the Androids. It's them and one EX. And again, the featured stuff here, but I think it's bugged as well. Uh, yeah, it's bugged, 0 0.25. The only other characters here are LFs. So if you're looking for a 1% character, like, say, Golden Freeze, who I don't think was even out th at this time, but as an example, uh, good luck. It was only LFs, which is another thing that's inconsistent. And then we move on from there, and we just see the same type of trends basically going forward. So I'm going to leave you with this. These banners are not bad, okay? They're not bad. They're not trash. They're none of those things. Because of the lack of characters overall, which is being a good thing in this case, boosting the overall rate to a whopping almost 1% chance per character. This is extremely high. Extremely high. And that's only possible because there's only like 13 sparkings or whatever on this banner. And then you get the chance at the other character. This one here, again, is not the best example because there's only a few characters that are even usable out of those characters. But these style of banners are not bad. These style of banners have some bad, but also have good. Because you have the option to guarantee yourself other characters, or other copies of the character, basically. So that's where the value of these is. The only other summon type we get are these. These are irrelevant because now you can just wait a few weeks and get the characters done naturally. Uh, so there's that, so it's not really much point. And then last but not least, these are our premium banners until we get the holiday season. And these are your monthly... Well, okay. Before I actually leave, there is one other banner type, which coincidentally is the biggest example of this character is good to the carry the banner. It's ultras. Uh, their ban this this just simply put, this banner structure is garbage. This might be the single worst banner structure in the game. Not characters or anything. The style of banner they're using here. This might be the single worst one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this banner like example is not great in terms of characters either, but the, it's they have a one character at a point three five, but they drop a massive amount of Z power, so that's the trade off, right? And then Goku's good enough to carry this; he's good enough to, to to carry your team in the meta, but the pool is heavily saturated, things like that. So like this banner, this is like this is like Trunks on steroids. This is actually way worse, but you have less steps, but it's still the same amount of cumulative CC, I believe, which is actually worse. Because it means you get less characters. I'd have to go back and actually do the math. Anyways, moving on. Uh, but the, the thing is, like, the step-up banners are still your best value for the most part. We'll probably see an ultra banner here in the next couple of days. Uh, so that remains to be seen probably next week. And we'll see how they handle that and whatnot. But what I really wish for and hope for is some sort of consistency with the amount of characters on the banner. Sparking or EX, whatever. Which, I didn't talk about EXs, but... You know, you need to understand that even if the EX is new, they're actually never boosted. They're always at the same freaking rate, 0 0.2 or whatever. They're never actually easy to get. This is why EXs are the real, like, secret rares on the banner. Because they've got a worse pull rate of the new Ultra. They've got a worse pull rate than the new LF. They've got the worst pull rates possible, basically. The EX characters are hidden on these banners for real which uh, on a side note the the character like i said there's two sparkings here some of these all-star banners actually have an ex added as well it just kind of really comes down to what they want to do uh, but i want to pull up the android banner just to show you this before i before i finish because i forgot to mention the exs and so you may think that's not a big deal but some of them are really good man some of them are really good like the the um the new one that came out, uh, Thouser, he's pretty good too, but good luck getting him. I could have used that banner as an example. But here is the new EX at a 0 0.27 rate. That is barely higher, barely higher than the 0.25 for the rerun sparking LFs here, right? 
it's almost half of what the androids are. Why? This is an EX. This makes zero sense. Zero sense. It, it does not make sense. They even drop at 250 because of the rarity, right? The rarity means that they're dropping at a lower amount. So you have to pull them so much to even get... The, okay, I'm done. I know the EX point because it's, it's something that's really bothered me for forever, for years. Anyways... The real uh, value is is in different banners for different reasons, um, but if you were to save to somebody to s to save for the uh, step up banners, you wouldn't be wrong. But I really just wanted to clarify what they're doing here and clarify why banners aren't terrible for different reasons, right? So feel free to join the discussion. Hope you all enjoyed. Again, to to clarify one last time, I'm not saying to summon on the Bardock type of banners. I well, I am saying that if you want to get those characters. Right, because that's that's going to be like your best chance of getting these characters. It really is. These banners are here for a reason. This is your best chance. You know, Bardock might be on another banner at a 0.5 rate, but the amount of characters is different. Right, the amount of characters is different. That's that's the key difference. Um, but I'm not saying that. I'm not saying to summon an all star banners every time, unless you really want these characters. Step ups are the best value in the game. Right, the double Z power. All that, they're the best value overall. So. If it comes down to it, I, if I had to choose, I would still say to summon here. But what I will say on this topic is I, I do hate that they diluted step ups the way that they have. They've 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 neutered these heavily. They've they've heavily made them uh, incredibly common. Everything's a step up these days. It's just it, they don't feel special anymore, unfortunately. Um, but these are the best ones. And also because they have these coins, which coins can get you tickets or they can guarantee you a copy depending on how deep you go. They're the only banner type in the game that actually has, well, not the only, but they're the main banner type that has that pity system these days as well, right? So I'm going to leave you there. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.